Welcome to Lecture Online. And our next topic in modern physics is, is x-rays. So what I've tried to draw here is a primitive x-ray machine. So the way that works is we have a cathode that will uh, release electrons if you place a heater right next to it to heat it up enough for the electron cloud to exist right above the cathode. You then apply a very large voltage, like 50,000 volts, uh, that will cause a potential difference between the cathode and the anode of 50,000 volts, thus accelerating the electrons across the gap very, very quickly. They will slam into the anode and then release most, if not all, of the energy of each electron into electromagnetic radiation, which would be a variety of x-rays. And so the question then would be, what would be the minimum wavelength of those x-rays? Remember, the shorter the wavelengths, the more energy they have. And then what would be the maximum energy on, in each photon contained within those x-rays? And just to give you kind of an idea, is that, of course, not all of the energy of each electron will be completely converted into uh, an x-ray. And so therefore, the wavelength will take on kind of a distribution. Looks a lot like the... Um, what we'd call the black body radiation curve, which is exactly what it is. And of course, the minimum uh, wavelength would then correspond to the maximum energy that these photons could have. And that would be in the case that the electron would completely give up the entire 50,000 electron volts of energy that it contains when it slams into the anode. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, first of all, we want to find the uh, minimum wavelength. And so what we can do first is find the energy of the electrons. And the energy of the electrons is equal to the charge Q times the potential difference delta V. So in this case, the charge is, of course, the charge of an electron. And delta V is, of course, the voltage applied to our X-ray machine. In this case, for example, 50,000 volts. So this is equal to one Q or one uh, charge or an electron uh, charge times the delta V of 50,000 volts. And so this would be equal to 50,000 electron volts of energy, converting that to joules, which is probably something we need to do. So that would be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per one electron volt. And let's see here, I do have a calculator handy. Uh, so we have 50,000 times 1.6 e to the 19 minus, and that gives us uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. All right, so that is the maximum energy any one of those electrons can have, assuming then that all of that energy is then given to the photons, which then will shoot away from the anode in the form of x-rays. We can then find out the energy of the photon. So energy of the photon is, of course, equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. And, um, um, of course, that would then be equal to, of course, the uh, maximum energy of the electrons. And if that's true, of course, then we know that the maximum energy a photon can have is 8 times 10 to the minus 15 joules, which then allows us to find the wavelength, because we can then say that's equal to h times c over lambda. So, taking that equation down over here, the maximum energy of the photon, of course, is equal to the maximum energy of electrons, which is equal to h c over lambda. If we then go over here, so energy max is equal to h c over lambda, which means that lambda is equal to h c over e max. And of course, that will give us the minimum wavelength, because the shorter the wavelength, the greater the energy. And so it's equal to 6.626 <clears throat> times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, multiplied times the speed of light, and the whole thing divided by the maximum energy, which we found to be 8 times 10 to the minus 15 joules, and that gives us the minimum wavelength of the radiation coming from that anode. So let's find out what that is. Take the inverse of that, multiply it times 6.626e to the 34 minus, and then multiply it times 3e to the 8, and we get the minimum wavelength is 2.48 times 10 to the minus 11 meters, Converting that to nanometers, that would be equal to 0.0248 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, or 0.0248 nanometers. And that indeed is the wavelength of X-rays. And that's how X-rays machines work. They accelerate electrons across a very big potential difference when they slam into the anode. If most or all of the energy is given off into X-rays, that's how an X-ray machine then gets their X-rays. And the most powerful 
uh, radiation can then be obtained by having the minimum wavelength, which is equal to this. Of course, there's a general distribution. So in this case, this is 0 0.0. 248 nanometers and above for those that don't give get all of the energy of each electron as it slams into the anode. Anyway, that's how X-rays machine work, and that's how you calculate the wavelength of those X-rays.